percent of ghosts. Boom! Scissor Slizzard, get work done. Garrett is 2 0. And uh, Aaron is on a draw. Alright guys, round three feature match action. No exciting turn to frog combo decks in this round, unfortunately, but we do have two somewhat uh, atypical decks. On the left is Garrett Meadows. He's playing the Mono Green Devotion deck he's been piloting the last few weeks. It's flashes red for Xenagos, but it's basically a Mono Green Court of Calling Nykthos deck. And his opponent is Aaron Daly, who is playing White Weenies leads off with a turn one Soldier of the Pantheon, followed by a turn two Spirit, what is it called? Spirit something. Spirit Bonds. Let's take a look at this as Garrett plays a Corsair. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, you may pay white. If you do, make a 1-1. One, one. Sacrifice one of those 1-1s. One, make one of your creatures indestructible. Alright, back to the action at hand. Garrett up to 22 off of a couple Courser triggers. He's got two Coursers in Elvish Mystic. Here's a Mana Confluence. Basically, his ninth red source. He plays both. He plays full uh, play sets of Temple of Abandon, as well as Stomping Ground. Cards on the left are uh, play. He's playing them face up. They've been revealed off coursers off the top. We see a forest and a Garrett Collar of Beasts. There's a Pelucranos on top. Aaron with a Boros Elite, a Soldier of the Pantheon, and a Spirit off of Spirit Bonds. So Aaron, Aaron trying to make a critical mass of dudes and then get in there with launch the fleet and or brave the elements. Garrett finds a Nylea. Garrett finds himself down to 14. <laughs> Quickly falling behind here. Which is not uncommon. This has got to be a horrible matchup for the White Weenie deck. As Garrett uh, floods the board very quickly with a lot of creatures. There's a Banisher Priest. It will take out Nalia. We do not have a fourth mana source to be able to activate our Spirit Bonds. We can attack in and trigger Battalion here for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Knocking Garrett down to 17. He's got two Corsairs, though. So he's going to be able to get that life back relatively quickly. Pelucranos drawn for turn. There is a Stomping Ground. So we can... We do have access either off the top of our deck or the forest that we see revealed to play that Garrick if we want to. Which we could then immediately minus to put the Pelucranos into play. So there is the six mana taking one off of the mana confluence. Revealing an old school court of calling on top. There is the Garrick. Garrick choosing how he wants to go about activating it. Still thinking here. No, no, I'm sorry. He already drew cards. We've got uh, Genesis Hydra, Elvish Mystic, a Hornet Queen, 
to go along with the blue grenades he already had in his hand. There's a replacement Garrick on top here. So Aaron needs some business and he needs it fast. Probably never going to die next turn, but uh, he's pretty close here. We're going to need to chain together Brave the Element turns. Or something of the effect. So there is a banishing light that's going to take out the Garrick. Unfortunately, another Garrick is coming right behind it. Get in for one with our Flying Spirit token. Just pass the turn back. Aaron's stuck on three lands here. Not that his deck really wants to play that many. So Garrick drawn for turn. There's a forest from hand. Go up to 17 off of not one, but two Corsair Crufix triggers. We now have access to seven mana, so we can cast a 5-5 five, five Genesis Hydra, or we can fire up a Garrick Caller of Beasts. So take one off of Mana Confluence, and it is the Hydra option. Nope. Hornet Queen. Hornet Queen shows up with four 1-1 one, one flying tokens. So the portion of the game where Aaron gets to attack without a trick has ended. This Hornet Queen effectively says target white weenie deck can't do anything useful. Aaron will need to find Anthem Effects, if he's playing Spear of Heliod, to buff his team, and then we'll need to find Brave the Elements to find a way through this wall of green fatties. So there's another Boros Elite, and we're going to make another token off of that. A lot of permanence in play, but not a lot of action going on. As Aaron struggles to find a way to get this big pile of dudes through. So Garrett plays a replacement Garrick. Tick it up. Drawing Karyatid Hydra. There's a forest, a temple of abandon, and a burning tree emissary. So hits three. So there's a quick ancestral recall off of our planeswalker. Yep, so they screwed up here. So this is the convoluted part, which is that Garrick puts the cards on the bottom. Uh, Genesis Hydra reshuffles there. But uh, Garrett Shuffling then shows two lands on the bottom, and Aaron's content with that. Has a quick fix for the FNM level. So some, a little bit of sloppy mechanics there, but not entirely obvious. So Garrett's going to take one off of his mana confluence, cast a burning tree, and chain that into a Sylvan Karyatid. He's got a million creatures on board here. Just passes the turn back, it looks like. Couldn't find any real attacks. Garrett really needs to find a Nykthos and a Pelucranos. He's got a Pelucranos in his hand. He needs to find a Nykthos so he can really break this game wide open. So Aaron continues to play one drops, make one one flying spirits with the spirit bonds, and passing the turn back, waiting for the slow inevitable death that he will succumb to at the hands of various giant green creatures out of Garrett's deck. So there's a Pelucranos coming into play off of Garrick's minus four. Now we have a lot of mana that we can use to do fighting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it looks like we can fight for four here. 
So we're going to go two to the Banisher Priest, one to each Boros Elite. Seems like a smart play from Garrick, as uh, any sequence of plays which will result in him losing this game he is way ahead on is when uh, Aaron can somehow find a way to force through damage. And he'll take three apiece from those Boros Elite, as, a, as opposed to only two from the Soldiers. And Garrett now feels confident enough to serve in. Garrett remembering the being polite and reminding Aaron that he gained a life off the Burning Tree Emissary the previous turn because of the Soldier of the Pantheon. Not obliged to do that, but does it anyway. Aaron lines up three spirits on three hornets. And likely going to take six damage after the fact. So Aaron decides to trade away his whole team. Not sure how we're going to win the game by doing that. But to be perfectly honest, not sure how we win this game, period. As Garrett is well and truly ahead here, he's got a handful of cards. Six, in fact, an active Garrick. About a billion mana. A 9-9 nine -nine blue Kronos. Nylea. That he can uh, pump some creatures with. This one seems to be over. and seemed to have been over for a long time. So, so Aaron reloads with two one drops and makes a token off his spirit bonds. Garrett draws for turn. It's a voyaging satyr. He attacks with everything. That's going to be good enough. So we move to the sideboards here. As the mono green splashing red for Zinigos devotion deck of Garrett Meadows takes game number one. And we're underway. Aaron Daly and his white weenie deck trying to crack back to even here against the green devotion deck of Garrett Meadows. He's going to turn two precinct captain. That's going to get in, make him a, make him a token there. It's Garrett stumbling with no mana dork on turn one or turn two, allowing Garrett to get him down to 18. And there's a burning tree, chaining that into what's probably a course of crucifix. So, put the brakes on pretty quickly. So Aaron now with two precinct captains and a soldier token. There's an imposing sovereign, one turn too late. So probably no attacks to be had here. Is Aaron's probably going to sit back and wait for a launch the fleet or a break the elements in this situation. Aaron changing his mind apparently about this imposing sovereign and Garrett allowing him to do so. Garrett is a nice guy. While well, I choose to commentate this match with a mouth full of cinnamon roll because I am super classy. So Banisher Priest clears out the giant spider. That allows the two precinct captains to get in. Not attacking with the soldier token, as it would get eaten by the burning tree emissary for absolutely no value at all. Making two more soldier tokens, so Garrett in a little bit of a pickle here. There's a land for an elvish mystic. And just passing back, so Garrett keeping seven on the draw with the most docile seven card keep I've ever seen out of this deck. Question in the chat from Cross Forever Dead. Will Lost Legions reimburse him to travel costs to relocate his home closer to the store? Well, they don't reimburse me to do the stream, so I can't imagine 
<laughs> They're going to do that for you. Yeah, who knows? We'd love to have you, though. So here's a Citizen Tactics, the chat talking a little about it, about it in Game 1. So I'm going to tap the Burning Tree Emissary. So they brave the elements effectively. Not sure what's going on here. We read citizen tactics a little bit closer. I believe the problem there is that uh, Garrett was trying to get some. Uh, Get some clarification, because if you cast, if you cast Brave the Elements in response to the tactics, then Garrett can't tap to use the ability, because it will not be a valid target since it's a green ability. And Aaron's no doubt giving all his creatures pro green with the elements if he's doing it after the fighting. And that's much more lucrative for Aaron, so I'm not sure exactly what was going on there. The fact that the burning tree did not die indicates that Aaron had cast it in response to the tactics, which is slightly less advantageous, but Aaron in a pretty good spot here regardless. So Garrett finds a Xenagos after all of this is done, makes a Seder token. There's a Banisher Priest for the burning tree emissary. That's going to be enough to get there. Aaron laughs like only Aaron can. Garrett, a good sport, by not reaching over the table and throttling him. And we move to a decider there. A very, very timid draw from Garrett. There we go. A lot of Zach Vilianco's decks, he is the pilot of the blue-red frogs deck. If it were played by a person who was not just trying to have fun, a lot of them have a lot of play. So Garrett on the Molt of Five here leads off with a tapped stomping ground. While Aaron leads off with a turn one, Soldier of the Pantheon. Sylvan carry hit on turn two for Garrett. Probably the best uh, draw he could have. It's going to slow down the offense as well as help him ramp. Wizards R&D finally getting the two-drop wall man creature correct by giving it hexproof. So there's three mana for a Nylea's Emissary. Going to gain three life off of three devotion. There's a Banisher Priest to take out the Emissary. And allow Aaron to get in for four here. Make a token. Then pass back to Garrett. Garrett finds a Nykthos. He does not have enough devotion to profit on mana. But he does have another life gain disciple, so not a bad multi file on the play here. But Garrett down to one card in hand with no business. Facing down a lot of business. Whoops, there's three mana for a Boros Reckoner. It's still in the format, but that's uh, Grizzly Bear good enough to keep Aaron from attacking here. And there is another Emissary sending Garrett up to 27 this time. So good at uh, gaining a lot of incremental life, but not that great at actually doing anything productive. It will help him generate a lot of uh, mana off of Nykthos. There's a Boros Elite, awkwardly cast pre-combat. Boros Reckoner serves in. We're going to double block. Garrett choosing to double block and still taking three damage no matter what because of the Boros Reckoner's ability. So Aaron draws for the turn. He's flooding out. He has six mana, one of which is an awkward 8th edition white bordered planes.
So Garrett untaps with a thousand mana because of Nykthos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tapping a Nykthos for seven. Chaining into another Nykthos. Go down to five. Make it up to 12. 13, 14. Genesis Hydra for 12? This is getting out of hand. Although Aaron is a Oblivion Ring Banisher Priest deck. So 12 pulls off the top. Any Anything in Garrett's deck, any permit will come into play here of his choosing. He doesn't have anything that costs more than seven. And we get the fourth, fourth Nylea's Emissary. Gaining him in this case nine, ten, eleven life. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven life. Up to 38. So going up to 32, I should say. So now feeling, uh, feeling like we can serve in here with our emissaries. So Aaron untaps. Somehow this game has slipped away from him. He's down to 14. He has a slew of small white creatures, none of which can effectively attack through a 12-12 Genesis Hydra and a couple grizzly bears. I keep calling it Nylea's Emissary. I believe it's Nylea's Disciple. In fact, it is. And it is a 3-3, not a grizzly bear. Aaron reveals that he has drawn yet another planes. Going back and correcting a soldier of the Pantheon trigger, I think. Which technically has passed, but both cre both players agreeing that that... Uh, I'm content with that fix. What does Aaron need here? At some point, Brave the Elements would be fine in order to push through the damage, but with Garrett <laughs> at 32 life, having gained well over 20 off of four copies of Nylea's Disciple, that plan is not going to work here. So we serve in with a Boros Reckoner. Garrett says, I'll take it. Down to 32. Garrett draws a card off the top. Plenty of haymakers left in his deck. Chord of Calling, Genesis Hydras, Garrick's. All would be pretty big at this point. Hornet Queen would be big. So there's activating, I believe, for 11. It is for 11. There is a Plucranos floating 7. So he has access to nine total with the carry to in the forest. So fight for four here. Well, not, not exactly fight, but four damage to divvy up. Two goes on the Banisher Priest. One on the Boros Relite and one on the Soldier of the Pantheon. There's Brave the Elements named in green to effectively fog that. But we still got a 9-9 nine -nine Pelucranos. Now let's see if, if Aaron remembers that <laughs> those creatures have pro green. They do, in fact. Garrett just forgetting, <laughs> forgetting how protection works. But it's not likely a mistake that's going to cost him too much here. He is down to 39, but at best, even with battalion triggers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 damage here with another brave. So even two full out, all out attacks not good enough. <laughs> there is a Phyrexian Revoker. Likely naming Garrett Collar Beasts. Phyrexian Revoker naming Pelucranos. Which is an awkward name at this point, considering Garrett would have to play one 
then kill it outright. As the room is getting a little bit rowdy out there, it's become difficult to hear myself think. So Garrett draws a card and serves in with the 12-12 Genesis Hydra and a 9-9 Pelucranos. So Aaron's going to find some damage here. He's going to... So I don't know what we're doing here. So Aaron choosing to deal the the Boris Reckoner damage back to the Genesis Hydra to trade with it. That's interesting. I would think you might just want to do it to Garrett, knock the top of your deck, hope you draw the fourth Brave the Elements and steal the game that way, but Aaron disagrees. So now joined by Tempo Frogs pilot Zach Bilianco. That's the name of that's the name I've given your deck. Tempo Frogs. Tempo Frogs. I like it. I, 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 I think it's that. both accurate, informative, and involves frogs. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's well, all well, the, it hits all the necessary criteria for a good magic deck name. Yep. We got so, some good magic going on over here. Well, we've got. Um, Garrett casting a giant Genesis Hydra. I don't even know how big this one is, but he has to get the 20 cider out. Looks like a 14. Um, so Aaron is uh, basically has a lot of dudes. A Boris Reckoner that's kind of complicating things. Uh, your replacement Boris Reckoner. Um, but Garrett's just been. This is a mold of five on the play, too. He drew three copies of Nalia's Emissary, found a Nykthos, a Nalia's Disciple, I should say. And then cast a giant uh, Genesis Hydra, which found the fourth copy of Nylea's Disciple. At one point, Garrett was at 32 life. Oh, wow. Against the White Weenie aggro deck. Yeah. This is a horrible matchup for Aaron. I don't understand how he ever hopes to win this one, but he did steal game number two when Garrett did literally nothing. Well, he can uh, hope to uh, Garrett attacks into his uh, Boros Reckoner with the giant yep. reverse lethal thing, right? Yeah, well, he did that a minute ago, and he redirected the Boros Reckoner damage to the Genesis Hydra to kill it. Wow. wow. I'm not sure. Yeah, all these creatures coming into play tap because Aaron has played a Imposing Sovereign down there in the bottom of the screen, behind, partially obscured by the AffinityForCards.com banner. But this Nylea making an appearance is important as it now has the ability to grant all of its other creatures trample, meaning that Aaron can no longer hide behind these subtle chump blocks, as the attack next turn will most certainly be lethal. So, Aaron is now posed with a, a question that must be answered. How do I deal 29 damage this turn? There's a Boris Reckoner. That's pretty good. Uh, ironically, at this point, not even... Blasphemous Act will kill. Because <laughs> two 13s is still 26. Garrett will survive at three. But, but can't he block the giant Genesis Hydra with one of the Boros Reckoners and do he a bunch of damage back? He can, except the way Trample works. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Normally, if, if Nylea was not in play, I see. and yeah. Garrett wasn't good enough to give that creature Trample, that, uh, that would work that way. That's the old death touch trample trick. I mean, not the exact same thing, but the idea. Mm -hmm. Hail Hydra. So we serve in with the team. It's more than enough. Yeah, that's 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 all she wrote. Three hill giants and Ilya. It's a six six. Plukernos is a nine nine. There's a fourteen fourteen Hydra. And we've left up a lot of mana. Can't even imagine how much mana we have because of <laughs> 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Nick those taps for 15, the 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We have 20 mana active, so we have 5 activations of Nilia. So we can give everything another plus 10, and we can. Everything is trampling. 
There's no way here and survives yeah. this. This is the, you've been nicked with the poison blade. You're dead. You just don't, haven't figured it out yet. All right, so in response, Aaron is going to launch the fleet. Does that make a I don't think it, make, make I don't think it does anything. I think it's just a, I think it's just a, uh, still had all these irrelevant cards kind of joke. Launch the fleet is a strive card that puts tokens into play. When you're attacking, right? Taps and attacking, yes. Not nearly good enough. All right, so Garrett uh, goes in a roundabout way to get there, but does in fact win this game with a deck that would win. Uh, if they played ten times, Garrett would win. Eleven? Uh, ten matches, yeah. He lost one game, but literally his deck did nothing. He didn't, I, I don't know why, he kept seven on the pl on the draw and did nothing and lost. I don't know, I don't know what happens there, but... Uh, it having, is his prerogative. Having sit in front, of, sat in front of that deck before, I'm shocked that it didn't just, you mm -hmm. know, play Nykthos and kill you. Because that's what it does. Play Nykthos and kill you. It's very good.